great the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain i could not climb in desperation i turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written jesus christ my living hope who could imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the god of ages step down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken i am forgiven the king of kings calls me his own beautiful savior i'm yours forever jesus christ my lord
Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning at St. Paul and Hubbard Lake uh, on this last Sunday of the church year. Kind of hard to believe that we are already to the end of the church year, which means uh, next week starts the season of Advent um, as we prepare for the coming of Christ, both as a baby in a manger, but also as we uh, look forward with great expectation to his second coming. <coughs> Everything that you need to follow along in worship, you can do so with the bulletin. It will also be printed for you on the screens. And this morning, <coughs> excuse me, we are going to hear from the epistle lesson um, out of Colossians chapter 1. Let's rise. Welcome those that we are worshiping with this morning. And you may be seated for our opening hymn, Chief of Sinners Though I Be.
we rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Though darkness surrounds us, Though our world is full of war and violence, though our relationships are strained and broken, though we fail to remember Jesus, in our lives we often ask ourselves, who am I? We seek to define ourselves by our jobs, relationships, finances, skills, and most devastatingly of all, our failures. Yet ultimately, who we are resides in none of these things. Our identity is in Jesus and what he has done for us. As we come before our Heavenly Father, we confess everything as we have el that we have elevated above Jesus, and we ask for forgiveness. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you. Our Jesus. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die and to rise for you. By his cross, Jesus makes peace and delivers you from all of your sins to live as his new creation. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you reign among us by the preaching of your cross. Forgive your people their offenses that we, being governed by your bountiful goodness, may enter at last into your eternal paradise. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the word. The Old Testament reading for this last Sunday of the church year comes from Malachi chapter 3. <coughs> Your words have been hard against me, says the Lord, but you say, how have we spoken against you? You have said, it is vain to serve God. What is the profit of our keeping his charge or of walking as in mourning before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the arrogant blessed, evildoers. Not only prosper, but they put God to the test, and they escape. Then those who fear the Lord spoke with one another. The Lord paid attention and heard them, and a book of remembrance was written before him of those who feared the Lord and esteemed his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in the day when I make up my treasured possession, and I will spare them as a man spares his son who serves him. Then, once more... You shall see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson comes from Colossians chapter 1, beginning at the 13th verse. <laughs> he has delivered us from the domain of darkness and has transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church, he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace 
by the blood of his cross. This too is the word of the Lord. We rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And there followed Jesus, a great multitude of the people, and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things, when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others who were with him, criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him, and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by, watching. But the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is Christ, the Son of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today... You will be with me in paradise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Lord Together we join our voices as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. world to come. Amen. You may be seated, and at this time we would like to invite forward the children for a brief message before Sunday school. Good morning. How are we doing this morning? Excellent. I want to tell you about a king. But before I tell you about a king, what is a king? Somebody who tells people what they have to do. So kind of like a dad. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, right. Okay. I could buy into that. 
What else is a king? A ruler. How do you know that someone's a king? What do they usually wear? Or what do they have? What? A crown. Okay, they have a crown. They also carry something. You may not know what that's called. A staff. It's, well, yeah, that's close enough. A scepter, okay, or a staff. What else? They usually wear something. A robe, right? And it's usually, like, has jewels on it and really nice expensive clothing, right? And usually the robe is really long. And they have diamonds. Yeah, maybe they have rings on their fingers, right? They wear expensive jewelry. What else? about a king. What do they ride on? <laughs> a horse. Yeah. They might ride on a white horse, right? Because they're royalty, they're they're important. Okay? <laughs> what else about a king? This is very detailed, but you're right. <clears throat> so if the, if the king isn't riding on a horse, he's maybe in like a buggy or a chariot, and there's someone else that's taking him wherever he wants to go, right? Like his, his chauffeur, right? Or his, his butler, just doing whatever he needs, right? So kings, they are in charge of all kinds of people. And they have all of these, these things that identify them as a king. But I want to tell you about a king this morning. And he was kind of a backwards king. Yeah, he, he didn't maybe fit the normal, what we might say, kingship. He didn't wear maybe all of the same things as what we might think of a king. And guess who this king is? Anyone want to take a guess? He has a name. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Jesus is the king that we're talking about. Now, did Jesus have a robe? No, not really, but he did have something. He did have clothes, right? But average clothes, clothes like the everyday person would wear. Did he have a crown? All right, let's duke it out right here. <laughs> did, he have a, did he have a crown? You say yes, why? I don't know. It just sounded like a good answer. Do you think he had a crown or no? Why not? Because he was a backwards king, so you would think he doesn't have a crown. Well, he did have a crown. Now, his crown wasn't made of jewels and all of these, these things. He had a crown of crown of thorns. Remember the crown of thorns that they placed upon his head? And, and a ruler sits on a throne. Did Jesus have a throne? He did, but it wasn't a throne that we would maybe think of. It wasn't this big, huge golden chair that had royal uh, coverings on it. What kind of throne did Jesus sit on? What kind of throne did he sit on? Bingo. Beautiful, yeah, the cross. The cross was Jesus' throne. And Jesus didn't come and, and tell us all of these things that uh, we had to do as subjects and how we had to serve him, how we have to go in and get him things and we have to do things for him. Jesus came and he did what for us? He served us, right? He died on the cross. And, and he died on that throne to save us, to save each and every single one of you. And so Jesus is a backwards king in a lot of ways because he doesn't have the typical crown that we would think of. He doesn't have the typical robe. He doesn't have the typical throne. And yet he's a king nonetheless. But where is Jesus right now? Okay, 
in one sense, he's up in heaven and he's sitting on the right hand of the Father. But where else is he? Past space. Yeah, I mean, heaven, wherever that is. Probably past space. Where? In our hearts, right? And so the king is not only ruling the whole world, but he's ruling our hearts. And he loves each and every single one of you. He has died for you. He forgives you. And he wants you to live a certain way. He wants you to follow his word. How do we do that? What do we, how do we know what Jesus has to say? We read it in the Bible, right? This is what the king has given us. He's given us careful instructions to live as his followers. And so Jesus is a backwards king. He's not a typical king. And I want you to remember that because today is Christ the King Sunday. And we remember Jesus as this king who came not to, um, not to be served, but to serve us and to die on the cross and save us. Okay, let's fold our hands and bow our heads and give him thanks for that. Dear Jesus, today we crown you king, lord of our life. We thank you for coming and for being a king, even though it was a king that was not understood. But we thank you for being the king that we needed, for dying on the cross and rising from the dead, saving us from ourselves. Help us, Lord, to live the life that you have called us to live and to always follow you. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys can head to the back this morning with Miss Gail and Miss Stephanie for Sunday school. Thank you so much for coming up. And we will continue our time of worship with our hymn, Lord Enthroned in Heavenly Splendor.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please bear with me this morning. I have a tickle in my throat. So I want you to think about what makes you, you. Okay? That's what I want you to think about here for a minute. And I want you to think about how every thing about you depends partly on you and partly on other people. So, for example, your upbringing is partly your mother's and your father's doing, but it's also partly your reaction to what they did or maybe left undone. Your education, it is partly your teacher's doing, and it's partly your acceptance, or for some of us, rejection of what they had to teach. Your job, it's partly from the training that you received from your boss, or his maybe like or dislike of you, but it's also partly to do with your performance. Your relationships, they are partly about your likes and your dislikes of the people that you interact with, and partly your likes and your dislikes along with a whole slew of other things and variables that should be taken into consideration. Everything about who you are is based partly on others and partly on you. That is with the exception of one thing, your life in Jesus Christ, which is based entirely, completely, wholly on someone other than yourself. Jesus doesn't mix his efforts with ours and wait to see how things might turn out. Instead, he makes your whole life depend wholly upon him and his indestructible resurrection life. If you know who Jesus is and you know what he has done for you, then only will you truly know yourself. That your life and your, and your identity are determined by Christ and him alone. Who he is and what he has done for you. Who you are in Jesus is not only unlike every other kind of assessment about you. It's also not something that you can take for granted. Although we certainly try. Because the truth is that there was a time when we were not in Christ. Right? Now, some of you may remember that. Some of you maybe not. But Paul reminds us, he says, we were by nature children of wrath, born in original and inherited sin. We opposed God. And we exalted ourselves each and every single day above him and everyone else. It is that realm of idolatry that Paul designates in the very first verse that you heard from the epistle lesson this morning as the domain of darkness. It doesn't sound like a very fun place, this domain of darkness. The domain of darkness is a place where darkness has its way. And guess what? It's dark. It's dark in the domain of darkness because people cannot see the way to the truth. People in the domain of darkness, they cannot perceive what they should about themselves or about Jesus or about anyone else for that matter. People in the domain of darkness are like the blind leading the blind, but they're leading them to a place of destruction because they have nothing better to point to than their own stumbling. You see, brothers and sisters, the domain of darkness is dark because it is precisely there where Satan holds his sway. 
He relies on darkness. He relies on the darkness of night. He relies on the darkness of the heart. Satan loves darkness. Because in the darkness, it affords him room to work, to breathe, to rule. He can work when we don't confess our sins, when we ignore those things that we have done wrong against God or against our neighbor. He can work when we spend time and energy and effort on hiding our sin. He can work when we have no one else with us and we assume that we're alone, that we've been forsaken and forgotten and that no one cares about who we are or no one sees the things that we do. You see, darkness is Satan's favorite place. It's his playground, especially when he's there with you. You see, it's from that domain that Jesus has delivered us. It's from that place of darkness that you have been delivered because Christ is the man born of light, born in the light of the Bethlehem star and risen in the morning light of the third day. Jesus is the one who rules the darkness. And in the world that is still yet to come, we will not need sun or moon or stars because Christ will be our light. That's the brilliance of Jesus. Now, when Jesus claimed you in the waters of holy baptism, he delivered you from that domain of darkness. He took you out of it. He transferred you into the light and the life of his kingdom. And so you're no longer stuck in that domain of darkness. It, this means that you have been redeemed. You have been bought with a price. You are now in a state of freedom. Freedom from sin, death, and the power of the devil. Freedom from slavery. All because someone else paid to get you out of there. In Jesus, we have redemption. We have the forgiveness of sins. And this redemption, while free to you, guess what? It was expensive. It came with a hefty price tag. It cost our Lord his holy, precious blood and his innocent suffering and death, and Jesus paid it all. He paid it all to win you back from slavery. You are redeemed. You are delivered because of him. But why should Jesus do this for us? Why should he redeem us? Or, for that matter, look at all the crazy people around us. Why should he redeem them either? Why would God do such a thing? Now, we can ask ourselves these questions and we can try to, to make sense of it. Was it a mixture of his love for you and the faith that he knew that you would have? Was it because he's the savior of the world and you're just such a lovable person? He just couldn't help himself. Unfortunately not. Although those things may sound good or make us feel a little better. But Paul tells us, he tells you and me that we are who we are only in Christ. Because of who he is. You are only who you are because of Jesus. That's it. He is the king of creation, and he will have what is his. Paul says he is the image of the invisible God. He is the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or rulers or authorities or dominions. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. You see, you and the rest of creation were not made for the devil to fiddle around with and to play with in the darkness. You were made by God for better things than sin and for better places than the domain of darkness. 
Jesus is the image of God. And you and I, we can't see the Father's face. No one has seen the face of the Father, but we can see Jesus. And we cannot know the heart or the will of the Father unless we know Jesus. And you certainly and absolutely cannot come to the Father except through Jesus Christ, his Son. He was the instrument of creation, and all things were created through him and for him. And so he has made you. He has made each and every single one of you, and so therefore, by right, you belong to him. You were not made by Satan. You were not made through Satan. You were certainly not created in order to be and to remain Satan's. No one was or is or ever will be. You were created for Jesus Christ, and he has redeemed you to be his now and forever. And so in the creation of all things, in the redemption of mankind, in the end of all things, Christ is and always will be the first and the last, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, the firstborn of the dead. And you, you have been delivered by him. Delivered by Jesus because you were created by him. And so now, now this means something for you. This means that you and me, we have peace, brothers and sisters. Paul says it. He says, for in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace, peace by the blood of his cross. Now, perhaps everything in this sermon up to this point has sounded wonderful. You've been tracking along fairly well. Wonderful to know the life that you have and the worth that you have, not based on you, but based on who you are in Jesus Christ. But peace? Now you hear this word peace, and maybe you start to think about all of your struggles. The struggles that you have with maybe mom and dad or with one of your children, perhaps the grudges that you have with a, a sister or a brother or a dear friend, or you think about the issues that you are facing with your spouse right now, and those things are far from peace. But fellow redeemed, Jesus' works and ways have released you from that bondage and captivity. You are not a tool of those trespasses. You are delivered from the darkness. You are redeemed from the ruins. You are saved from sin. You are cleansed from crime. You are healed from the horrors of this life. Period. You have peace because of the blood of Jesus Christ. This is the power of his blood. It brings peace between you and God, and it cancels the power of sin. It cancels your debt of your idolatry, it propitiates God, it makes him eager and willing and want to hear your prayers as your father. You have peace with God because he has made peace. You have peace with one another because he has made peace. That's why I bless you with peace at the end of communion, and at the end of the worship service. I'm not offering you a chance at peace. I'm proclaiming the peace that is yours, that Jesus has won for you by his death and resurrection. And so go in peace, brothers and sisters. Go in peace. Your God has reconciled you. Your God loves you. Your God has freed you from sin. Go in peace. You are free from the sin and from the darkness. You now live in the light of Jesus Christ. You do not belong to Satan. You do not belong to sin or death. Rather, you are alive in Jesus Christ. Go in peace. Your faith has saved you because you trust in him alone. Go in peace. You are at peace with mankind because your God is at peace through the blood of his Son. Go in peace.
You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Whether you die or whether you live, you belong to Christ, your Redeemer, your Creator, your Peacemaker. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, may it guard and keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We rise for the prayer of the church. We have a number of prayer requests for this morning, uh, so please let me list those before we begin our time of prayer. Um, for the family of Joyce Kissaw, this would be uh, the sister of Mike Tucker. Um, she went to go be with the Lord uh, this past week. And so we pray for, for Mike and for the Tucker family and for the Kissaw family. Um, for Linda Cuffert, who is hospitalized currently in Saginaw, um, as they continue to do some testing, um, we pray for her. Also for the family of uh, Danny Baker, um, this would be brother of Judy Bartz, um, who uh, passed away on Friday. Um, for healing. Uh, for John, I'm not even going to try that Polish last name. Um, also for Alex, healing for him, healing for Michelle, um, and peace for her at the loss of her husband. Uh, healing for Johnny, healing for uh, John Stutt, and then finally uh, a prayer of um, healing and guidance um, for Deb Dewar as she goes in for surgery this week. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. O Christ, our King, live forever. You have made peace for us by the blood of your cross. You have pleaded with the Father for our pardon. And through you all things are reconciled to God. By your Spirit, lead us to never-ending joy and thanksgiving that you have redeemed us by your passion from wrath and damnation. Lord, in your mercy. O Christ, our King, you have delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into your kingdom. In you we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Guard your congregations, your ministers. Preserve your word among us. Rule over your church with the forgiveness of sins and work all things together for her good until at last we rise with you. Lord, in your mercy. O Christ, our King, let the earth fear you and all the world's inhabitants stand in awe of you. For you alone are King of kings and Lord of lords. Preserve those who fear you and serve you in the midst of this fallen world, and maintain good government among us. Nevertheless, come quickly, Lord Jesus, for your kingdom is not of this world, and our citizenship is with you in paradise. Lord, in your mercy. O Christ our King, have mercy and deliver us from evil. For our sins we have deserved only condemnation and calamity. Yet you have remembered us from your cross and given us access to the Father in your name. Deliver the troubled, the sick, the dying, the mourning. Preserve them in your kingdom forever. Especially we pray this morning for the Kissaw family and the Tucker family. For Linda. For the Baker and Bart's family. For John. Alex. Michelle, for Johnny, for John, for Deb, and for all those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. O Christ, our King, in your blood, the saints of all ages wash their robes and find entrance to paradise with you. Bring us also with them out of death and the grave and into resurrection and eternal life at the last day, when we will see you crowned with glory, for you are the Lamb who has slain and now lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue our time of worship this morning with the service of the sacrament. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right to give it is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power in the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This too do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
heart and his peace. Amen. true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus may it strengthen and preserve you and keep you in the one true faith, now into life everlasting, and depart in his peace. Amen. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus may it strengthen and preserve you and keep you in the one true faith, now into life everlasting, and depart in his peace. Amen. strengthen and preserve you, and keep you in the one true faith, now into life everlasting, depart in his peace. Amen.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus may strengthen and preserve you and keep you in the one true faith, now and to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus may strengthen and preserve you. Savior Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all of our sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus may it strengthen and preserve you and keep you in the one true faith, now unto life everlasting. Depart in his peace. rise. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn, Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me.
Uh, as always, back of this folder will tell you things that are happening this week. One note uh, of something happening is Wednesday. Uh, we have Thanksgiving Eve worship here at 6 o'clock. Um, so we hope that you will join us for that as we gather um, to give thanks to God and to receive the gifts that he has to give. Um, also, um, not this Wednesday, which is for Thanksgiving, but the three following Wednesdays um, will be our Advent midweek series. We will meet here at 4.30 for soup supper. And if you've never been here before, how that works is um, you just come and eat, and it's good. And uh, you bring stuff if you are able. Um, and so there's a sign-up sheet if you're uh, willing and able to bring a soup or bread or a dessert or whatever have you. Um, it's kind of like feeding of the 5,000. Um, you, you don't necessarily know what's coming, um, but somehow everyone walks away with full bellies. So uh, we hope that you'll join us for that. And then 6 o'clock, we'll, we'll begin our time of worship. So that'll be for the 30th, the 7th, and the 14th. Um, also, um, I announced about Mike Tucker's sister, Joyce. Um, her funeral is tomorrow. The viewing is from 10 to noon. The service is at noon, and that is all at Hope Lutheran down the road. A um, couple other announcements here. Um, I have been requested to ask you all if you would let the children and their families go through the fellowship line first so that they can begin practice um, for the children's program. The Christmas children's program is like four weeks away. Where's Paul at? It's the 11th. So it's coming up, but uh, that's always an exciting uh, worship service as our children um, provide the message for us that day about uh, the birth of Jesus. Um, also tomorrow, uh, men's ministry is meeting, women's ministry is meeting uh, for the women in particular. They are going through the women of the Bible, um, and you can find out a little bit more information um, on that uh, on the back of your worship folder. Um, but they're really in need of some help because after um, their Bible study, they are filling out like 165 Christmas cards, um, which are going to be sent to um, the care homes in our area. Uh, believe it or not, most of these folks never see mail. Uh, so this is a great opportunity for us to share Jesus with them and to let them know that we are thinking of them during this time. The last thing that I have is, um, you can see things in here about Lutheran witness and all that stuff. Please read that. Um, but the last thing that I have is, if you recall, about three, over three years ago, we put together a strategic planning team um, to put together a three-year plan for the future three years of St. Paul. Uh, believe it or not, even with COVID, we completed about 95% of that plan. Um, but we are now looking forward to the next five years. And so I'm putting together a strategic planning team. I have a, a couple of people on that, but I still am in need of about three or four people. It can be anybody. Uh, we meet like once a month or so for just a couple months um, to put together a, uh, a plan um, for the next several years here at St. Paul. So if you're interested in that, please come talk to me. And if I don't hear from anyone, I just start calling people, showing up at your door. Making you tell me no to my face, which you would never do anything like that to your pastor. So just think about it, pray about it, uh, and if I have to twist your arm a little bit, I can do that. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thank you, God. Yeah.